Hello there, everyone, and welcome to a new review on the channel. And today we're looking at Any Thought of Card to Pocket by Geraint Clark, Christian Grace, and Illusionist. A very, very cool effect, one that's been selling out really quickly, and one that has piqued the interest of quite a few people, and some of them a bit on the fence, wanting to know more about it. So I'm making this review for you. Let's roll the intro and dive straight into it. Perfect, so you decide to stick around, which means you want to learn more about any thought of card to pocket. Now, what is any thought of card to pocket? Any thought of card to pocket is essentially an effect where a specter is gonna take 10 cards from the deck, spread them in their hand, think of just one, then when they name their card, their card vanishes from their hand and appears inside of your pocket. Very, very simple in premise, and I'm gonna demonstrate it here for you. Now, of course, I don't have a spectator, so it won't play out as good as it would if you had, you know, actual uh, spectators to do this, but even then. So you would mix up the deck, you would give it to the spectator, and then you would tell them to cut the deck in half for them to hold on to that, and you would take this. So you would demonstrate to them that they would have to count the cards like this, one, two, three, etc. So up to 10, so they would take 10 cards and they would do it uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. So you take those 10 cards, then you instruct them to just flip them over the deck just like this, and then to spread the cards just like that in, in their hand so that they can see all the faces and to think of one in the middle of the spread, but not make it something that's kind of easy to guess like a court card or an ace. So go for something in the middle, uh, an interesting card and a, a more difficult card. So they would go for one, then they would close everything up and they would hold it in their hand. So they would hold everything in their hand. This goes back on top of the deck and you're good to go. So now you tell them that what you're gonna do is the moment they name their card, it's gonna vanish from there. So they're gonna name their card they're thinking of, let's say the Four of Clubs, and they say Four of Clubs, and you say, look, Four of Clubs, just like that, it's gone. Count how many cards you have. Then they're gonna count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One card has vanished, and then you tell them, you remember, I vanished it right there. Underneath the math, there's just one card. I didn't do it with the pocket just because, but then it's of course the four of clubs that was in your pocket. And then you can also show here, if you want, you can spread the cards to them and show that there is no four of clubs among the cards uh, that are left. So that's essentially a very quick presentation of the effect. It's not the best presentation, of course, as I mentioned, it's just, just a quick one to get us going into the review. But um, yeah, that's essentially any thought of card to pop it. So now that you know what the effect is, let's talk about where you purchase this, how much does it cost, and what do you get? So you can purchase this, you can purchase this at Illusionist as well as some other retailers. It is also available at some other retailers, for example, Alakazam Magic, and I do think some other maybe uh, magic shops have it, so check there as well but this will cost you 25 US dollars. So it's gonna be 25 US dollars. And what you get with your purchase is this kind of a cardboard-ish envelope. Inside of here, when you open the flap, the first thing you see is your tutorial video. And the tutorial video is around two hours long. As with all Illusionist products, it's separated into categories, you know, intro, uh, outro, and all of that. So every single category is uh, separated. The main effect that you saw me perform is taught in around 29, 30 minutes. And then you also have an extra section that goes over almost an hour, a bit over an hour of the ways to do this effect without the cards that are provided to you, without all of the gimmicks that are provided to you. So they give you a ton of variations to do with that as well. So additionally to the instructions, as you may have guessed, as I just said, you get a few gimmicks. So you get one gimmick that you probably already own around your house or you probably already have in your deck. So one of them is not really something special. However, then you get an extra set of cards which are special that let you do this effect super, super clean. So as I mentioned, those cards are optional. You can do it without them. But I do think that doing the effect with them is better, but it also has a few drawbacks. Now, I also wanna mention that when I'm gonna be reviewing the product moving forward, 
I am going to talk about this version that I just performed, the one with the gimmick cards, because I feel it is the best version, it is the cleanest version, and it is the most direct version of the entire project. So I will be reviewing it based on that. I won't be reviewing it on the Mark deck variation or other, other variations of the effect. I will be reviewing it based on the main one with the gimmick cards, because that is essentially what they're selling you and the main effect of the project. So having said all of that, let's talk about difficulty. So how difficult is this effect to perform? In terms of mechanics, as you saw, the spectator does everything. This, apart from the shuffle at the start of the effect, the spectator does everything. They count the cards, they turn them over, they spread them, they think of one, they remove them, they keep them in their hand. So they pretty much do everything. So in terms of mechanics and how this works, it is pretty much self-working because you demonstrate with uh, the other half of the deck to your spectators what they're supposed to do, and they're just gonna mirror you. So if you tell them you have the cards, flip them over like a book, spread them like this, right? They're gonna just mirror what you're doing. So it's basically a self-working effect in essence. There's nothing hard or complicated going on here. However, what is a bit more complicated is you have to make sure that you give the instructions correctly, right? Because you don't want your spectator to start uh, counting the cards like this, right? So you have to make sure they count them like this. You have to also make sure they don't count them on the table. So you have to, to be careful of the way you give the instruction as well as, right, when they're here, you have to instruct them and make sure that you manage them well to turn it like this. Because if they turn them like this, or if they just do that in their hand, or if they start spreading them, the effect will probably not work. So you do have to just be careful as well here. When you tell them to spread, you don't want them to go like this through the cards, right? You have to be careful to tell them, just take like this and spread the cards, right? Because you don't want them to just go like this through the cards and think of one. So you do the only difficult part, which is not that difficult because I've performed this, I think up until now seven or eight times and I've never really had a problem. I've had a specter at one point uh, when I told him to do this and spread the cards, he had a bit of difficulty. So he's spreading like really big. So I just stopped him and told him, no, 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 just slowly push your thumb like this so you can see the card. And I rectified that mistake really, really quickly. So it's not an issue. Uh, you know, it's not an extremely glaring issue. You can manage it, but nothing too hard mechanically. You just have to work a bit with your audience management to make sure that everything flows smoothly. Having said that, let's go into practicality. So what do you need to uh, perform this effect. Well, you need a deck of cards and your gimmicks. The gimmicks can fit, so essentially how this effect works can fit in the cellophane of your card box. So you can have your, your deck of cards inside, you do your effects, and then when you wanna do this, you can just sneakily go, uh, you know, as you place the deck in your pocket or whatever, add the cards onto the deck or do one of those moves where you keep the deck here and you talk to your specters and then when you remove, you remove the cards and place them on top. But essentially, um, you will need the gimmick cards and um, the the reveals. I'm going to say that. So you're going to need the gimmick cards and the reveals ready. But yeah, pretty much a normal deck of cards with the addition of the gimmick cards and your reveals. So that's pretty much all you need in terms of carrying. Now, having said that, what are the angles? Well, the angles are pretty much 360 because the spectator is handling everything. And no matter the angle that you take, when the spectator is doing everything, it's pretty much 360 degrees. There's no issue uh, regarding that whatsoever. What are also, what is the inspectability of this? Now, because the cards are giving, they are not inspectable. So yes, you can spread them on the table and show that their card has disappeared, etc. but you cannot let them take the cards and examine them. You cannot have the cards examined. So you need to be careful of that. What is the reset? The reset, I did it in front of you, basically almost. Uh, this now is fully reset. So after I performed it, all you have to do is just uh, count the cards again to show that there are only nine and do a small displacement uh, at the like that you saw me do right now and it's reset so it's probably what five maybe seconds maybe a bit less and you're ready to go again now the last thing I'm going to mention regarding practicality is that um, there's two things so first even though the Spectre has a free choice of card, is not every card, okay? I think that was pretty self-explanatory. They can't think 
of all of the 10 cards. I won't tell you why or whatever, but I do think that you kind of have that in the back of your mind. So just if you do it from table to table, the effects are going to, the results are going to most likely vary, but they won't vary to a large extreme. But I do think that probably the specters are going to forget their card that they selected so that when they talk to each other, if they will, they're going to tell, oh, did he do uh, that trick where you think of a card and it goes in your pocket? And it's going to be, yeah, that was crazy, right? They won't say, oh, he did me a trick where specifically I chose the four of clubs and that four of clubs went into the pocket. So you don't have to really worry about that. You do have quite a bit of leeway in terms of the cards they can think of. And the last thing that I do want to mention, which is possibly the only kind of uh, practical negative that I have about this is that if you do the gimmick version, you can't really have the gimmicks in your deck when you use it. So I do think it's best for you to start the effect with this. So start with this. Then when you do the, when the effect is done and while people applaud you, you can maybe steal out the gimmicks and then go into your normal deck because I do feel it is a bit harder to do it from a shuffle deck, you're doing routines and then move into this one. It is possible, right? It is very possible. It's It won't take much practice and effort to do it, but I do think it's better that you start with this, then kind of clean up the deck and go into your normal shuffle deck routines. So that's kind of the only things I had to mention about that. Moving forward into where to perform, where would you perform this? I think this works pretty much anywhere where you perform cards. If you perform cards in parlor, you can do this. On stage, you can do this if you perform cards. Close-up bars, table hopping, whatever, it's pretty good since you don't really need a table surface as well. This can be done fully in the hands. So pretty much you can perform this anywhere. I won't talk much about it or find excuses because you can pretty much do this anywhere where you perform with your playing cards. So having said all of this, what are the positives and the negatives of any thought of card to pocket? So as always, let's start with the negatives. What are the negatives of the any thought of card to pocket? The main routine. So the main routine, the cards will not be examinable at the end. I don't think there is a need for them to be because it is pretty fair and pretty clean in the way that everything works. But if you are worried about that in the main routine, the cards will not be examinable. So you will have to take care of that. There are routines, as I mentioned, in the variations that are examinable, but I am still reviewing the main effect, as I mentioned. So no, for the main effect, the cards aren't examinable. Uh, you will have to have some good audience management because, as I mentioned, you do have to make sure your specter does what needs to be done and does it well as to not fully expose or fully show off what's going on. And the last possible negative that I can find is, as I mentioned, I do think that this works better as a starting effect rather than an effect that you do in the middle of your set. Even though you can include it in the middle of your set, I don't think it plays as well as if you were to start with it and then move into some other routines with your deck. So having said that, what about the positives? The positives are that the tutorial is great. The cards that you receive are great. The variations that you get for this effect are great as well. The effect is relatively easy to do. It has a very good impact. It's varied in the term of results and it's a very direct and clean effect. So there's a lot of good here as well. So having said all of this, would I recommend and what would I rate any thought of card to pocket? Would I recommend any thought of card to pocket? And I would say, yes, I do recommend this. If you're a card magician, you like the demo that I did, which was pretty bad, or you like the trailer, or you like what you saw in the live performances that I think are live on the Illusionist website, then yes, you are going to enjoy what you're getting. It does exactly that. It does it exactly as you saw it. There's no fluff in the ad copy or in the tutorial or in the video for the, for the project. What you see is what you get exactly. So they didn't hide any moves. They didn't hide any slides. They didn't hide anything. What you see is what you get. And if you did like it, then you will like the project. Pretty simple as that. So yes, I do recommend it. And what would I rate it out of 10? I would rate it an 8.5 out of 10. I do think it is very, very good. I do have for the main version, which is the main one that I'm rating. I do have a bit of gripes with it, but there are other also variants that can make for that up. I will be using this. And I think that most people that will buy this will be using this. So an 8.5 on 10 for me. So 
Thank you so much for watching. That's it. That's all I have to say about any thought of card to pocket. If you have any questions, leave them down below. If not, like and subscribe. And I'll see you all in my next video. See you then and bye-bye.